Hey guys, what's up? It's Uncle Zonky, and welcome to Road to Completion Escape number 3. Um, I have a few pretty big things to accomplish. Uh, the first of all is this uh, C1 Small Dungeon, which I actually have all my warps checked off, so I'm not losing any XP doing this. But uh, what this is for is I have now unlocked Floor 55, which is pretty cool. So I can now um, do Floor 55. I'm not going to because it will check it off, obviously. Um, but yeah, this is my first time accessing the new floor since getting 109 engineering. Um, unfortunately, I was unable to record getting 109 engineering since I last made a video just because I wasn't thinking clearly and I did not have my recorder open when I got the level. So, um, and I missed the screenshot. So anyway, I did get 109 engineering since my last level. And of course, uh, RuneScape 3 has come out since then as well. So, um, my stats have not changed at all, except for Dungeoneering. It's now 109 instead of 108, and I am 2.2 million XP to go to 110. So you might be thinking, hey, you don't have any eclipses for us. Why are you making a Road to Completion Escape video? Um, well, I do actually have a few things to show, the first of them being unlocking Floor 55, and I guess I'll go on to the next ones now. Before we do anything else, I just kind of wanted to show you guys my reward tokens from DG. I have 860k reward tokens. I think it would be kind of cool to get a million reward tokens, and it wouldn't take too long, just like a couple days, well, maybe just a day of dungeoneering to get that. Um, so I think that would be a pretty nice accomplishment. And I'm not really sure what to spend them on, because I kind of have everything I need. Um, I don't have chaotic longswords, and I don't have chaotic crossbows, and I don't really need or want them. Um, and I don't have any of the chaotic shields either. Uh, I'm not really sure if I would need or want those. Um, what I do have is I have the Charming Imp, I have Chaotic Claws, I have a main hand rapier, I don't have an offhand rapier, but I don't really feel a need for it. I have a Chaotic Staff, I have the Demon Horde Necklace, I have the Arcane Stream Necklace, I have a Chaotic Maul, um, I have the Tome of Frost, I have Herbicide, I have a Bone Crusher, um, and I have all the scrolls, like the scroll of life, the scroll of cleansing, and the scroll of efficiency. I'm not sure where the scroll of efficiency is, but that wasn't very useful at all, but I bought it anyway. Um, and there's also this prayer, this uh, scroll of renewal prayer that I have as well. Um, those are all the items that I bought from DG. If you know of any others that are really, really useful that I need to have, feel free to suggest them in the comments, and I'll buy them because I have plenty of tokens and not much else to do with them. So anyways, I guess now it's time to show you guys the real accomplishment that I have made towards the completion escape. So here we are at the Livid Farm. Um, I know probably not a whole lot of people were really expecting this, known, knowing me as I'm a person who kind of likes to procrastinate and doesn't like doing things that are really boring. But uh, anyway, we're going to claim rewards in Livid Farm, and not only did I unlock the second spell, but I unlocked the third spell as well. So I have been doing quite a bit of Livid Farm lately. Um, it took a good five hours, six hours, something like that. Probably closer to six hours to unlock these two spells. So I did that. Uh, I now have three spells in Livid Farm unlocked. Um, that's really cool. I have, uh, what, eight more to go. Um, so that's quite a bit. It's going to take a while. Um, what I'm really interested in is this teleport to Trollheim. I need uh, 744,000 tokens to get that. But that is going to be so useful because it will make farm runs really easy to do because you can teleport directly next to the disease free patch when you have this spell. Um, also, I've heard this remote farming spell, which is the next one, is pretty useful because you can cure your herbs if they're diseased. Um, so that's kind of useful as well. I might actually stay on the Lloyd Farm spellbook, um, or the Lunar spellbook, as long as I'm not doing any Slayer because then I don't really need combat spells. But, of course, if you are slaying, you can't really be on Lunars because you need to use your spells. But, anyway, I got uh, two Livid Farm spells unlocked, so that is really helpful. Um, that's f six hours less that I need towards the completion escape. Um, so, anyway, I guess I just need to do a lot of Dungeoneering in the near future. I would like to get up to about 113 Dungeoneering as quickly as possible and get myself that Primal 2H sword. And that would probably make Dungeoneering a lot easier. Um, anyway, I'm going to show you guys the website in just a bit. I guess I have a couple more things to talk about before I show you my checklist of everything ticked off for the completion escape. So here's another story mission that I just completed. I believe this one gave me 25 lacquer. Um, and now that I am in the last region, I have been making a lot of progress. 
um, towards my you know full sets of all three ports armor because that's really my goal. Um, the reason why I didn't do a rush to Tetsu as a lot of people do, they get to like the fourth region or so and then just try to get plate missions as fast as possible. Um, the reason I didn't do one of those is because I really wanted to get all three sets of armor, um, and so I tried to focus on getting as many scroll missions as possible, and I wasn't too concerned about getting Tetsu as fast as possible, if that makes sense. Um, so anyway, we're going to look at my port management right now and see the state of my scrolls. I have the Sea Singers top and bottom unlocked. I have another scroll mission that is going right now. If that succeeds, then I'll get the first scroll for the Sea Singers hood. And of course, I have full Tetsu, um, scroll wise at least. And out of my resources, I have 65 plates, so I could make either the Tetsu legs or the Tetsu helm if I wanted to. I'm going to wait until I have 100 and then make the Tetsu plate body, however. And I also have 44 lacquer now and 50 chi, so I could potentially um, make a Sea Singer's robe legs pretty soon or save up for the Sea Singer's robe top and I don't have enough lacquer to make anything for the Death Lotus and I haven't unlocked any of the scrolls anyway but I'm gonna try to get that plate and that chi as fast as possible and um, but really focus on the scroll missions as well and I will try my best to get all full sets of armor for the player on ports and that should be great so now it's time for my completionist cape checklist as always the link to this website will be down in the description it doesn't just have a completionist che cape checklist it has a lot of other things and if you don't trust links the url is just maxcape.com so if you want to type that in go ahead um, but anyway there was a new quest added fairly recently called bring home the bacon and i haven't done that and also there's a lot of music tracks uh, released with RS3, so I was only one music track away, but now I'm a whole bunch of music tracks away that I have to unlock, so that's a bit frustrating. But all of this is completely updated. Um, the spells that I've unlocked Repair Rune Patch and North Arty Teleport are on there. The one level I've gained, so I'm now 2484 out of 2496 total level. Um, I also realized that I have unlocked the spells Toon Bane Ore by doing the quest ritual of the Mirajat, and the Urania Teleport, which you get after completing Lunar Diplomacy and talking to the Baba Yaga person. And everything up here is also up to date. Uh, the mini quests, I haven't really done these. And the bottom is cut off just because of the way the recorder is, but um, I haven't really done many of the mini quests. Unfortunately, I have to do some stuff like lay Clarence the Mage to rest and uh, have to catch those charm sprites. I should just go ahead and do that one because they won't take too long. And I should really get started on the Fermentic Sagas as well because I've heard they're actually kind of fun. But, uh, of course, I like to procrastinate a little bit, but hey, at least I'm starting to do Livid Farm, so I'm getting a little bit better with that. And just for fun, I'll go over the trimmed requirements really fast. All of these are completely updated. Um, even the stuff where I've only killed, like, seven Chompy Birds, I still put that in there. I only have two Castle, War t Castle Wars tickets, but I still put that in there. Um, I have... I'm over... Ha well, nearly halfway for the uh, Champion's Tackle Box for Fish Flingers, so I've made some good progress on that, and nearly halfway for the Dabarak Statue to be completed. I've made progress on that. So mostly all I've done here that's big is the Artisan's Workshop and a few court cases, and that's about it. Um, the last one, I have one court case cut off is the Frog Prince versus the people that I've completed as well. But anyway, um, Dungeoneering on RS3 is not really very fun due to the lag and all the disconnecting, but hopefully I can get some good progress on Livid Farm because of that, and possibly even complete Livid Farm within a couple weeks or so, um, depending on really how motivated I am. Anyway, thanks for watching this video, hopefully you enjoyed, and stay tuned for future episodes, and also be sure to join my friends chat in game, it does not auto log you into friends chats anymore so you have to manually join it, but it's always nice to talk to you guys. Anyway, farewell.